It's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The okay, I, I want to go. News. I'm going to think I'm crazy on this. So last night, Lakers lose again. They're terrible, unwatchable. But Anthony Davis had a huge night. And so this Anthony Davis story was incredibly predictable. This is not me trying to gravy train it here like I talked about this before the season. Is that all last year, off season, he got ripped for his lack of commitment, his lack of passion, his lack, his uneven play. And so he was going to work his tail off this off season, come into shape and crush. And he is crushed. His last four games, he's averaging 35 points and 18 rebounds. He played great again last night. And I said a month ago, this is precisely the time, yes it is, that you trade him. It's the perfect storm. LeBron is out, so Anthony Davis is getting tons of touches. The Lakers just faced a stretch of weak teams, the Nets, the Spurs, the Pistons. Anthony Davis has heard his soft critics, so he's, he's really worked as hard as he's ever worked. But the numbers don't lie. He peaked at 24 because of the bubble and a, a hiatus during the season. He had a great bubble for a couple of weeks. In the end, Ask yourself two questions. Are the Lakers close to a championship team? No. They need like three more B-plus guys. They got to get more dudes. And ask yourself a second question. Will Anthony Davis remain healthy the rest of the year? You don't even, yeah, listen, he, he was hurt last night again. <laughs> so you know the answer to that. So listen, Patrick Beverly, when he landed, was seen as a get for the Lakers. Laker fans keep telling me Kendrick Nunn's the answer. I'm going to go with none. Uh, this is the time. Buy low, sell high. There's a, listen, you think he's untradeable? Ben Simmons got traded. Westbrook got traded. You think he's untradeable? There's a lot of teams out east, and they're looking at their roster thinking, how do we stop Giannis? There's about four teams in the east. They're going to have a Giannis issue. Just saying. Celtics get Anthony Davis. Lakers get Robert Williams, maybe a player. I mean, I'm just making it, just throwing it out there. Being crazy. But this is what we predicted. He would have a monster start. That's when you put him out there. Daryl Morey moved Ben Simmons. And Davis is twice the player of Ben Simmons, just has an injury history. The holiday season's here, millions of people holiday shopping, hoping to secure Black Friday deals. Flurry of shopping activity attracts scammers looking to cash in. Many shoppers report experiencing fraud during the holiday season. Scammers can take advantage of you. Now, it's important to understand how cyber crime and identity theft work, okay? Your personal info is out there. It gets exposed. Uh, you could have somebody take a loan out in your name and you'd never know. A crime committed by thieves pretending to be you. If you become a victim of identity theft, LifeLock by Norton is there. Nobody prevents all of them, but it's easy to help protect yourself with LifeLock. You could save up to 25% off your first year, 25% off. Just go to 1-800-LIFELOCK, code HERD, or LifeLock.com, code HERD. It is dangerously easy the next month for a cyber criminal to steal your identity. 1-800-LIFELOCK or LifeLock.com, code HERD. heavily on the spectacular that's not it man that's college that's mountain west football that's 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 the schedule byu plays right that's that's not that's not sec football that's not nfl football you got to do the mundane really well he's heavily reliant on hero ball and the spectacular uh, peyton manning's a great example of how to do it every play felt like surgery peyton manning they, they called him a teeth clencher every play mattered in the nfl it does so if you're going to err, err on the side of Peyton Manning, not Drew Locke. Don't be casual. Zach is casual. Second thing is, intangibles for quarterbacks are huge. Maybe not middle linebackers, maybe not guards, maybe not safeties. But for quarterbacks, Joe Burrow's got them all. Coachable, toughness, likability, reliability, emotional discipline. I talk to Burrow every week in a podcast. He avoids getting in trouble. Uh, he knows what to say, when to be supportive, when to have an opinion. That stuff matters a lot. You are the face as a player. You're the coach on the field and the face of a franchise. Zach's not good at that stuff. Uh, third, words matter by quarterbacks. Like a word. No. Are you to blame for the loss? No. What would Eli Manning have said? Eli Manning was legendary, to use another Manning. Eli... Whenever the Giants lost, 
always available to the press. When they won, he preferred other guys to go out and speak for the team. Eli's really smart. Peyton's really smart. They got it. Words matter. Do you think it's your fault, Zach? No. Lost the room. Couple of things to really think about here. Robert Sala defended Zach Wilson three weeks ago. Called anybody who questioned him idiots. I have, I must be one. <laughs> right? And now he bails on him. So that means over the course of three weeks, he's lost the locker room. He's lost players. He's lost veterans in that Jets defense um, that, you know, are given everything they have. And he's lost some of those guys. Don't kid yourself. Robert Sala probably contacted, you know, a couple of veterans privately and said, fellas, what do you hear in the locker room? I'm sure Sala did that. Uh, something else to think about. If you look at the Jets' schedule, a lot of tough road games coming up, and they're a fringe playoff team. The next two games, after Chicago, at Minnesota, at Buffalo. They're going to be underdogs in those. That means Chicago and a bad defense is a must-win game because Buffalo and Miami have better rosters, and it's fair to say that Belichick is the better coach than Sala, although Sala's had a good year. So Chicago is a must-win game. They've also got later in the year at Miami and at Seattle, 3,000-mile flight over to the Pacific Northwest. So you start looking at the schedule, this is an incredibly winnable game for the Jets. I like them this weekend. Now I'm not so sure, but the staff is looking at film, and Mike White, to them, can win a game they really, really need to win. Two other things, um, and this is not a shot at Robert Sala. I think it's a reality. He's a highly emotional guy. I've seen a lot of swings. Support him, bench him. He's very emotional. I tend to think that when you're a quarterback or a head coach, you got to pl kind of play 30,000 feet above. They call them walk-around coaches in the NFL. Pete Carroll, Jimmy Johnson, Bill Parcells. They're called walk-around coaches. They walk from unit to unit to unit. See a little there, a little optimism there, a little critical thinking there, a little criticism there, a little positivity there. They walk around. Sala tends to be all in, very young, very passionate. His emotions week to week are really on display. Don't love it. I think he'll grow over time, but I don't love that part. The second thing about Sala, and I, I, I had real doubts coming in. I didn't like Zach Wilson. I wasn't sure on Sala. I do think Sala's had an excellent year, and you can see his coaching. So I today, I believe, like Justin Fields as the Bears quarterback, Robert Sala as the Jets coach, I think he got a winner. Now, they got to win games. Justin's got to win games eventually, and Robert's got to win games. But I do think they've both turned a corner as a quarterback and as a coach. They've turned a corner. The other thing is, and this is undeniable, and I have talked about this multiple times, these defensive coaches and young quarterbacks ain't good. Belichick, Mac Jones, ain't good, bro. Regressing. <laughs> I, I, the defensive coaches... Mistakes by quarterbacks drive them insane. Well, young quarterbacks make mistakes. Mike Tomlin saying yesterday about Kenny Pickett, yeah, we'd like it to go faster. It's not going to go faster. He's a rookie quarterback. I have seen over and over and over defensive coaches, Mike Zimmer and Kirk Cousins. Now Kirk's flourishing. It's not that Mike Zimmer can't coach. He's a great coach. Pete Carroll and Russell couldn't get along. Belichick and Brady.